Another treat for the boys. Direct from America's most powerful aircraft carrier, the USS Hancock, at the Naval Air Station in San Diego, California. It's the Milton Berle Show. Yes, live from the flight deck of the aircraft carrier Hancock, the Milton Berle Show in compatible color, pioneered and developed by RCA and in black and white. Tonight, the Milton Berle Show joins forces with the Navy in bringing you an hour of star-studded entertainment. And here they are, the men of the USS Hancock with their families. It is to them and to all the brave guardians of our shores, the men of the United States Navy, that we dedicate our show tonight. And now, here he is, up on the captain's bridge, the old sea dog himself, Commodore Milton Berle! We join the Navy to do a show. We're gonna have laughs. We're gonna be happy. We're gonna be smiles. We're gonna be dancing. So won't you join me down below? Look down there. sensation, Elvis Presley. Well, I said, Shakespeare, I won't do right to save your doggone soul. And here she comes, flying through the air with the greatest of ease, the delightful, delectable, delovely Esther Williams. sponsors. RCA Whirlpool. Dependable home appliances to save you work and serve you well. RCA. World Leading Electronics and RCA Victor. Sunbeam. Best electric appliances made and Sunbeam Shave Master. Mr. Color Television, Milton Berle! Thank you, thank you. Before I go any further, I just want to say I was up at the captain's bridge, and the captain told me that the entire carrier has the weekend off. The carrier has. You guys have got to stay here. I want, to, I want to tell you it's great to be here on the Hancock, and what a reception I received. They greeted me yesterday with a brass band. Well, it wasn't exactly a brass band. It was a wet back from Tijuana slapping two. <laughs> Wait till I finish the joke, will you, please? I was going to say it was a wet back from Tijuana slapping two tortillas together. <laughs> oh, you fools. I... Uh, no kidding, I said to the captain, I said, you call out a reception for me, Milton Burrow? And the captain, <laughs> captain looked at me, he said, look, 
when you're anchored in one of the biggest bays in California, one more drift doesn't make any difference. <laughs> but the captain was really very, very, very nice to me. He invited me to sleep in his, uh, uh, on, the, on board last night. Now I know what a Navy bunk is. It's a bookshelf with a mattress. <laughs> I didn't know Mario Alonso was on the show tonight. I'm just, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. The men here really have very beautiful accommodations. Really, they have. They got towels marked his, and let's go to San Diego and dig up a couple. <laughs> yeah, you know, you guys are very, very lucky to be stationed here right in Coronado Beach. I mean, it's beautiful. Really, I mean, I mean the birds are flying, the trees are sighing, and the sailors are trying. I want to tell you. <laughs> But that's what I like about you sailors. I, I really am crazy about you. I mean, you sailors are all devoted. You're devoted to life, liberty, and the pursuit of anything in skirts. I, <laughs> tell you, I really, I got to tell you this. I said to one of the sailors, I said, <laughs> I'm laughing at this joke because it's so bad. I, uh, no, I said to one of the sailors, I said, do you get any liberty? He <laughs> said, that depends on the girls I go out with. But this, uh, <laughs> I, which one are you working on, Donnie? <laughs> And I want to tell you, when you guys get liberty, I know where you go. You go over here to the Mexican village. And that's really a wonderful place. What atmosphere. It's so beautiful. I, I said to the owner, I said, I love a place that has sawdust on the floor. He said, what sawdust? This is yesterday's furniture. <laughs> and boy, these sailors are so fabulous. I really, and what lovers. One of the sailors, this I got to one of the sailors had a date the other night with a gal and he said, uh, and she said to me, she said, I want a man who can hold me like John Wayne, squeeze me like Gregory Peck, and kiss me just like Marlon Brando. <laughs> he said, I can't do that, but I can bite you like Lassie. <laughs> I, I know one sailor who's been married seven times, really seven times. He's not a sailor, he's a wholesaler. <laughs> Everybody's getting married. I, of course, you know Margaret Truman. She's getting married to a very wonderful guy, and they're going to tie the knot uh, at Margaret's hometown. How about that? Here's a guy who's going to go to Independence to lose his independence. This I don't know. I can just see, just see the whole thing now. It'll be wonderful. Right after the ceremony, Harry is going to tie a pair of old shoes to the back of his car with Nixon in them. <laughs> and Grace Kelly. She's getting married. Incidentally, I was asked to both weddings. They weren't really. Margaret asked me to go to Grace's wedding, and Grace asked me to go to Margaret's wedding. <laughs> but let's face it, marriage is really great. There's something about marriage that gets you right here. <laughs> Your wife's cooking. <laughs> Boy, have I got a wife. I got a lovely wife named Ruth, because I changed the name recently to Paper Mate. Paper Mate, really, because every time we have an argument, she gets in 70,000 words without refilling. <laughs> Oh, this, I must tell you, before I bring out Esther Williams, I got to tell you, this morning, a sailor, a sailor ran up to the captain, and he was so excited, he just couldn't think of anything to say. And the captain, the captain said, sing it out, man, sing it out. So the sailor sang it. He said, should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind, the admiral fell overboard, he's a half a mile behind. <laughs> Uh, Victor Young, will you hold this hat, please? Please, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. And now, fellas, I want you to batten down your hatches, drop your anchor, and get ready for the moorings. We're ready now to pipe right in from you, right in from Hollywood, one of Hollywood's answer to the steam catapult next to Pepsi-Cola. She's America's favorite liquid refreshment. <laughs> Here she is, the very glamorous, the very exciting, very talented Esther Williams. Come on, let's bring her on. Dig this crazy superstructure. <laughs> when I count three, all eyeballs. Back in your head, please. I want to tell you, it's great, Esther. It's really great to have you here tonight. I really Well, mean... it's wonderful being here, Milton. Yeah. And you know, I really must compliment the sailors. Yeah. Do you know that when I came aboard today, there wasn't one whistle? Wasn't one whistle? No. <laughs> How can they whistle with their tongues hanging out? <laughs> 
But Esther, let me look at you. Absolutely, don't you look beautiful? Absolutely, you're absolutely breathtaking. Oh, thank you for building me up, Nick. <laughs> I didn't. You come in with me. Now, this <laughs> You look gorgeous, huh? You look absolutely gorgeous, except for one thing. What's that? I mean, I mean, how come no bathing suit? I mean, this is ridiculous. Uh, Esther Williams without a bathing suit. That's like, it's like strawberry shortcake with the whipped cream on the inside. <laughs> I'm disappointed, absolutely. Well, Milton, and I am through with bathing suits. What There's another side to me. <laughs> yeah, but without a suit, who can tell? Now, this... <laughs> I mean, don't worry, fellas. If I know Esther, she'll be back in a bathing suit sooner or later. And Esther, isn't this really a handsome group of men, huh? Oh, they certainly are. Uh, Esther, how would you say that... Uh, how would you say that I compare with them? Well, Milton, your generation had charm. <laughs> <laughs> How do you like that? She threw me a curve and she certainly could spare it. This, uh, <laughs> incidentally, Esther, have you met any of these fine gentlemen yet? Oh, yes, I have. Yeah. And you know one of them was even kind enough to show me around the carriage. He showed you around the carriage? Yes, I think he was the chief petting officer. <laughs> well, let me get... It's not petting. It's not petting, it's petty. I was with him, not you. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, these Navy men are famous for their maneuvers. I, uh, you can ask any girl, I mean... <laughs> no, but really, it was a wonderful trip, Milton. Really? He took me all around the boat, and he took me below deck to show me the hold. He showed you the hold, huh? <laughs> Did you have any trouble breaking? No. <laughs> I was... Oh, oh, these are real gentle. Where else did he take you, Esther? Well, he took me up on the bridge. Up on the bridge, mm -hmm. yeah. And he even let me steer the ship. Oh, that's... Ooh. Yes, I know. First time in the history that an aircraft carrier came in third at Caliente. <laughs> if it never made that left turn at the free I want to tell you something. Milton, yeah. you must be serious. I am. I'm terribly, terribly impressed with this carrier. Really? I am. Really? Yes. I want to give you some statistics. What? Did you know that the USS Hancock is 898 feet long, yeah. 103 feet across the beam, and it took 41,000 tons of material to put it together. Really? Who made it? Jackie Gleason's tailor? <laughs> but, but you're right. Now, I'm sure you're right. Uh, Esther, the U.S. Hancock is really like a floating city. Mm -hmm. Really a floating city. They've got a post office, stores, everything a man would want when he's all alone at sea for six months. <laughs> Statements expressed by Mr. Burl are entirely his own and do not reflect the opinion of this carrier. <laughs> oh, I know. Oh, you mean girls, huh? Yes, girls. Well, uh, these men, they, they don't miss girls. You know the old saying. <laughs> you know the old I mean, out of sight, out of mind. That's the way it is with these guys. When the girls are out of sight, they go out of their mind. <laughs> really, they do, really. Uh, well, it wouldn't be that way if this ship were made a little more attractive. What do you mean, You know what it needs? What? It needs a woman's touch. Yes, a woman's does. touch? Mm-hmm. I don't dig you. What touch. do you mean? What do you mean? Well, look at this flight deck. Look yeah. at it. Yeah. Just bare boards. You know what they need here? What? They need wall-to-wall -wall carpeting. <laughs> Isn't that just jazzy? It is. Wall-to-wall -wall carpeting. It'd be a good idea. Then we'll bruise their knees when they're shooting crap. This, uh... <laughs> Anything else you think this would yes, need? Yes, yes, I do. What? I think the mess hall is just a mess. <laughs> yes, I do. I think what the mess hall needs is to be painted a, a nice soft color. Yeah? Nice pale green. Good. Mm -hmm. That's it, green, pale green. green. Then it'll match their faces when they're through eating. <laughs> Uh, really, I mean, I like that. I like that. But and what else do, do they have? Well, those sleeping quarters. What's the matter with them? Ah, uh, they have absolutely no privacy. No? These men, these poor men, no privacy. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I would do? What would you do? I would put Venetian blinds on all the portholes. Well, that'll keep those nosy barracudas from peeking in. <laughs> what, what's next? Anything else? Well, look at the superstructure. Beautiful, I think. No, it, it is I not. I think it's bad. I don't think so it's a dull dull gray a dull gray well how about putting a chartreuse flip cover over it i <laughs> now i esther i must admit that you got some pretty sensational ideas and they're original you like my yes ideas? i do who do you think i should talk to about them? i think you should go to the ship psychiatrist i think you flap your bathing cap 
I'm only kidding, Esther. Look, why don't we leave the Hancock the way it is? I mean, after all, it, it holds so many wonderful and exciting memories for these men. All right. I really mean that. You can meet the memories of Navy men. You can meet the memories of Navy men. Take one leave in any port. You can meet the memories of Navy men. Take one sailor at a quart. You can meet the memories of Navy men. One big SP. One brig KP. <laughs> memories are made of this. You can meet the memories of Navy men. Take one pair of tight blue pants. You can meet the memories of Navy men. And then add some yearning for romance. You can see the memories of Navy men. One day on shore. His pay no more. <laughs> memories are made of it. You can see the nautical life no One fling in Tokyo. One gob who's brokio. One geisha girl with some nylon. <laughs> One big Hawaiian moon. One hula girl. One little sailor boy with a smile on. Take one pound of powdered egg. You can't beat the memories of Navy Then men. you add salt pork and turkey legs. You can't beat the memories of Navy men. One gale waves rise. One rail, 12 guys. <laughs> Navy life is joy and bliss. <laughs> with man. She'll be back. She'll be back. All right, there's, there's one coastline worth fighting for. I'll tell you. I think it is. And now, you guys and gals, all your wives and sweethearts, you're in for a real treat. This is the first time that the Hancock is going to rock and roll while still at anchor. Here's a young man who in a few short months has gained tremendous popularity in the music business. His records are really going like wildfire. He's America's new singing sensation, our new RCA recording artist. Here he is in a big reception for Elvis Presley. <laughs> Since my baby left me, well, I found a new place to dwell. Well, it's down at the end of Lonely Street. I newest RC Victor release for you. This song is called Blue Suede Shoes. 
But it's one for the money, two for the show, three to get ready. Now go, cat, go, but don't you step on my blue suede. Who can do an offense? Take off my blue suede. You can knock me down, step in my face. And now I got a little surprise for you. Here for his very first public appearance, I'd like you to meet my twin brother, Melvin Presley. Melvin? Radio Land. Radio Land. Radio Land, this is television. Mel Melvin? Milton or Mel? Melvin. <laughs> Must have another brother, too. <laughs> Te television. What the heck is that? Well, it's a little box. Yeah. It's got a window in it. Yeah. There's millions of people out there. And they're looking in a little window. Yeah. They can see you, but you can't see them. What a dirty peeping Toms. <laughs> But, Elvin, you're wonderful. And keep buying them records, will you, folks? Mel, uh, who's it? you? Elvis. <laughs> Elvis. Hot dog. <laughs> Elvis needs the money. Well, I'll tell you, she was mighty proud to be here on this ship here, the Yushin Coke. And I want you to know the Yushin Coke. Yushin Coke? Yushin Coke. That's what it says on the side of the boat. U-S-S-H-A-N-C-O-C-K. Yushin Coke. <laughs> well, what's my... I know how to spell. That's U-S-S Hancock, Melvin. <laughs> Keep buying them records. <laughs> I'm real proud of you, Elvis. Well, Melvin, I would all of you. You owe everything to me. That's well, you taught me everything I know. Uh, I'm glad you told that to the folks I did. I, I taught him his singing style. I used to drop grasshoppers down his pants. <laughs> That's how I keep jumping around. <laughs> grasshopper. Keep buying them records. <laughs> do that for us. What are we going to do now? Well, uh, let's sing a song. Let's sing a song to get a, to do the blue suede shoes. Half soul. Here we go. One more. Take it away. Well, it's one for the money, two for the show.
love him, honey. Coming for the show. Ready, you ready now? Go, cat, go. Chums be. I must go and find them. Captain! Captain! The boat is sinking fast! What should we do? Heaven! How will we ever drive a laundry? Help! 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 I will save you. Take the laundry first. I'll go down with the ship. Don't worry, folks. This is only a dramatization. <laughs> Indeed it is. And now to dry these wet clothes in my RCA Whirlpool dryer, and you'll see how nice they'll smell. Now, first I select the temperature. Then I set the dial to dry these cotton clothes, thus. The new RCA Whirlpool dryer holds so much, 20 pounds of wet clothes, and notice the satin smooth surface of the drum. And now, through the magic of motion pictures, we show you the new RCA Whirlpool dryer in operation. Warm, gentle air dries your clothes quickly, gently, safely. Its ultraviolet sun lamp gives clothes an outdoor fragrance without sun fading them. Here. Like a meadow in summertime. <laughs> and here are your clothes, all clean and fresh and sweet. Thank you, friend. Thank you, friend. Mm -hmm. Francis. Yes, better than uh, Francis. Well, well, we can wash it. Oh, but dear, I want to wear it tonight. Oh, my RCA Whirlpool dries synthetics quickly and perfectly. How oh, divine. Bring me a screen. All right. Oh, that's perfect, darling. Thank Big you no much. problem. <laughs> this will be easy. Why don't you talk to a woman who uses an RCA Whirlpool? Then ask your dealer to show you the new RCA Whirlpool dryer, electric and gas model. Thank you. Oh. Now, uh, gentlemen, here is an event that you've been waiting for all day. For one of the men out there, tonight will be the luckiest night in your entire life. You're gonna have a date? with Esther Williams right after the show. How about that, all right? Because this morning, every sailor on board dropped his dog tag into a, a large fishbowl, and right now, we're gonna pick out the lucky dog tag to see which guy wins Esther for the evening. Will you bring out the fishbowl, please? Here we go. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Herbie. Thank you. Now, here we are, cavemen. Slap on your fins. Get ready for your date with Esther. The lucky serial number is... 8374659. 8374659. Whoever it is, better hurry up. We haven't got all day. All right, keep your shirt on. I'm coming. What do you make of such a big deal out of it? Francis, oh no. <laughs> Francis, of all people. I can't believe my eyes. It, it's you, Francis. Y you're in the Navy? No. No, no I'm, I'm Prince Rainier. I'm sailing to Monaco for the wedding, okay? <laughs> Send me a present. I'll send you a present. Something I, nice. I will. I don't understand French and Navy. How, how did you get past the rat guards? <laughs> that's what I want to know. How you... Oh, that's clever. Yeah. Oh, I think that's so brilliant. Thank oh, you. yes. It's a fitting remark for this great occasion. What occasion? God meets love. I'm pleased to... <laughs> you just be careful how, you, how you, you're, you're pulling on government property I'm here. I'm sorry. How do you like this? Really, I read into a fishbowl and I come up with a shrimp. But well, what about me? I come up here for a date and I wind up with a nut. I would... 
Now, stop stalling. Where's Esther Williams? I want her. Now, wait a I minute. Want to this go I out can't with believe. This I can't believe. You want to go out with Esther Williams? Why, what's wrong with her? I would... <laughs> what's wrong? There's nothing wrong with her. It's you. It's you. You look like something that dropped down from the crow's nest. Oh, isn't that cute? Yeah. Oh, such sophisticated repartee. You're a regular wild Oscar. I would... <laughs> Not Wild Oscar, you mean Oscar Wilde. No, Wild Oscar, he's a jerk of my neighborhood. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Careful of you. Remember one thing. Now, remember one thing. Uncle Sam didn't need you at all. Oh, yes, he did. No. And you better be careful how you handle me. Yeah. You know, because you'll get in a lot of trouble with him. Yeah. Because Uncle Sam needs if me. If Uncle Sam needs you, we're all in trouble. <laughs> I mean, isn't that a corker? I oh, I think that's a corker. All right. I just got one thing to say to you. What you do you want? You're going to be off this ship by six o'clock. And what if I'm not? You'll go over to Fantail with the rest of the garbage. I was... <laughs> Very funny. Uh, have you talked that way to me? I flew all the way down to United Airlines, right down to San Diego, to entertain. You're right. I shouldn't say those You're things. You're right. You shouldn't right, say because things you're like... Because you're coming here today is a great novelty for these men. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. It'll be the first time they get seasick without leaving the dock. I was. <laughs> I wonder if Hollywood knows that there's two talking mules named Francis. <laughs> you, I mean, I mean, you shouldn't complain. You don't have to watch me. You had your choice of staying ashore or staying here and watch me. Some choice. What do you mean? Give me liberty or give me death. I was. <laughs> Why am I standing here arguing with you? You're stopping me from doing my show. Well, that's our job, to protect the American people. Oh, sir. Why don't you take off your hat and show them what a real flat top looks like? Flat top? Funny. Oh, funny, 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 funny. Funny, funny. Oh, you're such a card. Thank you. Why don't you mail yourself to the dead letter office? Now, will you stop bothering me? I'm mad. I'm boiling. You must be boiling. You're laying three-minute eggs. Now, shut up. Oh, don't laugh at me. You don't think I'm funny. You don't think I'm... Oh, I think you're very funny. Thank you. But what's one against the world? I was... <laughs> I'll have you know that when it comes to comedy, there isn't a handful of people who can come near me. I don't know a handful of people who want to come near me. <laughs> You're talking to Milton Berle. Milton Berle, star of television. I'm outstanding in the field. You look like something that's out crawling in the field. <laughs> now, listen... When I tell jokes, people take their hats off to me. Oh, that I agree. Yeah. That I agree. I think it's only fitting to take off your hat for something that dies. <laughs> <laughs> Were you born, or did they scrape you off the bottom of the boat? <laughs> there goes another one. Francis, will you do me? Will you do the country a favor and get out of the navy? Would you do that for me? I would, but I can't get out of these pants. <laughs> Fine sailor, you don't even know the first thing about a ship. I. You don't know the first thing. About I don't. No, you don't. I know everything about ships. You do. Ask me anything about a ship. All right, where's forward? Up front. Where's starboard? Over there. Where's stern? He's on KP. I was. <laughs> For your information, Stern is back of the ship. And that's where he's doing, KP. On the back of the ship. <laughs> I'll stick him. Don't worry, I'll stick him. I'll ask you a few more questions. What does four bells mean? Two o'clock. What's eight bells mean? Four o'clock. What's nine bells mean? There's a good humor man on board. I'm sorry. <laughs> telling you what this is ridiculous just and you don't know anything you don't and you want to go out with esther williams are you kidding this i never heard of she's she's a foot taller than you how are you going to kiss her <laughs> well for a bargain like me she'll come down to the basement I'm... <laughs> now come on stop song uh, and bring out esther I williams I, uh, bring out esther williams all right. i want esther williams yell at me do you understand he's insanely jealous <laughs> bring out esther williams all right Esther, darling, come on out here. Come on out here, Esther. I told you she'd be out here in a bed suit. Now, Esther, darling, I know that you do anything for your country, but this may be asking too much. This is the sailor that won you for a date tonight. Well, I'm very happy to know you. So am I. Well, if you're ready, Miss Williams, yes. let's slip off to the silvery sands of Coronado, where we can contemplate the cloud formations and hark to the symphony of the waves as they murmur against the shore. Oh, that sounds 
Wonderful. What'll we do after that? Then we'll get loaded. Uh, shut up! <laughs> Pardon me, will you? Uh, uh, Francis, you can't talk like that. She's a big movie star. And movie stars are not used to being talked like that. You understand? You're very rude. And once and for all, I want to tell you, you don't talk that way to me because me, I am a great, great, big movie star. Oh, chip, 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 chip. <laughs> Yes, I am a movie Uncle star. Uncle Dixie's a movie star. Yes, I am. Out in Hollywood, I'm just waiting to get into the right vehicle. You shouldn't get into one. You should get hit by one. I was... <laughs> you... Pardon me, Ed. You make me so mad. I'm telling you, every time I talk to you, my heart beats like a hammer and I shake like a leaf. What's with you? Maybe you're in love with me and you don't know it. <laughs> Now, look, Francis, watch yourself. Will you watch yourself? You're kidding. What do you mean? You must be kidding. She's standing here in the bathing suit and you tell me to watch myself? <laughs> oh, I can't do it. Well, well, now, look. Come here. Yeah. Come here just a minute. Yeah, and talk to I'm me. scolding. You're so cute and you're so adorable. Yeah. You remind me of a miniature Rock Hudson. Yeah, I'd like to tie a rock around his neck and throw him in a Hudson. That's what I mean. <laughs> now, look, Esther, if you want a good-looking movie star type... I've often been referred to as another tab hunter. Sure, when it comes time to pick up the tab, they're gonna hunt for you. <laughs> what are you trying to do? Horning on my I'm day? Not I won the contest, not you. Is he? It's true. Milton, it's true. He won me fair and square, right. and I'm going out with him. Yeah. That's tell him we'll really live it up, huh? All right. Huh? We'll go to Mexico. Let's do it. <laughs> Mexico? Take me with you, huh? You're kidding. Well, Don't you know you can't smuggle dope across the border? <laughs> Please, Esther, you really going out with it? Why don't you get, go out with them when they get through building them? Now, Milton, Why? you've got to stop scolding this sweet That's boy. That's right. I think he's absolutely adorable. Uh, you know something? Good things come in small packages. <laughs> Some of the most famous lovers of history were small men. Yeah. Short men. I just love short men. <laughs> Remember me, Toulouse Lautrec? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You intrigue me. Yeah? Tell me all about your hopes and your dreams. And what do you do for excitement on this ship? Oh, the usual things. Backgammon, badminton, shuffleboard. I... <laughs> Not shuffleboard, shuffleboard. You shuffle when you want and I'll shuffle when I want. Are you ready now? Yes, I'm ready. Now, wait a minute. Just a minute. Now, just let, let me uh, straighten yes. one thing out. Miss Williams has on a bathing suit. You want to pull the dignity of the Navy, you have on a sailor suit. Now, you cannot walk down the street. You can't go to Mexico with Miss Williams in a bathing suit and you in a sailor suit. Now, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to well, do? Well, I'll just do this about it. That's it. <laughs> Thank you, Esther, and thank you, Arnold Stang. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Esther and a very, very big surprise is going to be back a little later. Also, Harry James and his very fabulous combination starring Buddy Rich at the drums after these very important words first from RCA Victor. allowance when you trade for one of the brand new RCA Victor Spring Specials. RCA Victor Table Model. Very nice. How much? Nationally advertised price, $199.95. With your trade-in, you get this big screen RCA Victor for less than many small screen sets. How about this one? Big trade-in allowance on this handsome table model or even this television deluxe console. Can I tell my friends about the spring specials? Tell them all, but tell them to hurry. This offer is for a limited time only at RCA Victor dealers everywhere. Now, let's watch RCA television service in action. Here's the home of Fred the Forest Ranger. 
He doesn't feel cut off from the rest of the world because he has television to keep him company. But even out here in the wilderness, <laughs> trouble can develop. When it does, though, Fred isn't worried. It's an RCA Victor television set, and that means he can count on RCA factory service to set things right again. Call RCA Factory Service. There's a branch in most cities, and you can depend on RCA Factory Service. Ask one of your neighbors or ask any friend. Your TV troubles are bothering you, and your little family's unhappy and blue. Calling the boys who know just what to do. Call RCA Factory Service. America's finest television deserves America's finest service. For the telephone number of the RCA service company branch nearest you, consult your classified directory. Oh, man, you hear that? Now, if that man was your bugler, it'd be a pleasure to wake up. Wake up every morning. Do I have to say more? Here he is, the man behind the horn, the one and only Harry James. And I would like to do a little thing for you that's called the two o'clock jump with an introduction by the great Buddy Rich. But
catch at the drop. How about that? Wonderful, Harry. Encore? Encore? Want another number? I'll be very glad to. Oh, you laugh, huh? You don't think I can play? Are you kidding? I used to be with Dorsey. Uh, Tommy or Jimmy? Phoebe. <laughs> I think I'll play by ear this show. <laughs> you and I, Mr. Schwartz, yes. uh, Mr. James, yes. uh, <laughs> are going to do a duet. We're All going, right. We're going to play night and day. You fiddle around the day, and would you do me a favor, please? <laughs> Give me an arpeggio, please, you don't mind. Thank you. Uh, what are we going to play? Oh, uh, uh, what would you like to hear? You say? I say, what would you like to hear? Clyde McCoy, but we're stuck with you. <laughs> oh, oh, that's a good one. That's Nothing. Good. Okay. I. Did you have onions for dinner or something? <laughs> now let's stop fooling around. You understand? Yes, Everybody in attention and watch itself at all times, as Jackie would say. Watch it. You understand? Because yes, I want to do what I want to do, and you can do what you want to destroy yourself. It's later. What do you do? <laughs> Who asked him? Who's this, your brother, Jesse? Funny line. Oh, say. Funny joke, huh? Yes. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much for the horse you gave me. He's a horse owner, you know. He gave me a horse, what was it, yesterday at 10 for him? Yeah, but you see, it was his first time around the track. Yes. He didn't know the way. <laughs> Followed the other horses. There will be no jokes by you. Oh. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Give me a say. Here we go. We'll take it from the top where yes, it says, with him. Yeah. Too fast. <laughs> I'll rehearse the band. Because I want to do what I want to do when you can do what you want to do. Stop it! I'll take it right from the top. Here we go. And... We'll be back in 30 seconds after 30 second identification. Take it away, please. We'll be right back. Stay tuned for Esther Williams, Harry James, Milton Burl, live in color. charge here.
This is the Navy Seaman Smith. Swap down the deck, the length and width. What should we scrub when we scrub each crack? Bring your junk to my bunk, scrub my back. <laughs> to enlist as a wave is really the chance of a lifetime. the chance I would probably do it again for the last two weeks I have done enough work for a lifetime and I shudder at the thought of continually doing it for ten how we march and we march in the Navy every maid on parade is the joy is the joy and we still of women all over America are enthusiastically recommending this Sunbeam controlled heat automatic fry pan. It's the most useful appliance I have in my home. So useful I keep it out all the time. All I've been getting is compliments on my food since I got my Sunbeam fry pan. That's why I'm so enthusiastic about it. Hello, I'm Peg Murdoch. You know, we've just finished talking with thousands of enthusiastic Sunbeam fry pan owners like these women. And we've found 97% of them are recommending the Sunbeam to their friends and relatives. Why? Because the Sunbeam makes everything you cook more delicious. Here's how. Sunbeam's fry guide, as you can see on this enlargement, shows you the correct temperature for preparing your favorite foods. For example, you just dial your Sunbeam for 300 degrees, and you'll have eggs that are perfect every single time. And more delicious, too. Now, just think of it. No more eggs that are blistered and burned around the edges. 
yet raw on top. And no more bacon that's burned and curled because the pan was too hot. Why, now you just set your sunbeam for 340 degrees, and your bacon will look better and taste better, too. And you can cook 20% more in the sunbeam because of its square shape. But be sure you get the genuine and original Sunbeam Controlled Heat Automatic Fry Pan. And don't forget this big special offer. You can still get a $3 trade-in allowance for any old iron on this new Sunbeam Steam or Dry Iron. This Sunbeam is all new with exclusive steam flow vents that give you an even distribution of steam over the entire ironing surface. While ordinary irons leave this path in the center because their steam vents are placed only around the outer rim of the iron. So get the new Sunbeam Steam or Dry Iron. Now only $14.95 with trade-in. And it's by Sunbeam, the best electric appliances made. Well, fellas, I guess this is it. But before we go, first I want to thank a very great man. I'd like to stand up and take a bow. Captain Black, would you stand up and take a bow? Captain Black, gentlemen. Thank you, Captain. Thank you. I want to thank you and your wonderful staff for rolling out the red carpet for us. And I want to thank all of you men for receiving our show the way that you did. You just don't know what it is. It's a great honor for us uh, to be here at the Hancock, one of the finest ships in the Navy. Is that right, Esther? That's right, Milton. And Harry? Buddy, Elvis. Had a wonderful time. And, you know, the Hancock is really one of the finest ships in the Navy, and it's a great thrill being here. Next week, ladies and gentlemen, Dinah Shaw will be on the same time as I was on this week. She will have as her guests uh, Dean Martin and Margin Gower Champion. I'll be back three weeks tonight, three weeks from tonight, with a new show. On behalf of Sunbeam, RCA Whirlpool, and RCA Victor, may I say good night. God bless you all. Thank you very much. <laughs> and crew of the Northern Bell Show flew to San Diego on United Airlines. United flies DC-7 mainliners to 84 cities from coast to coast and on to Hawaii. This is Hal Sawyer speaking.